Hey guys, in this video, I have a really cool looking arcade stick. It comes already built, but in a clear acrylic case. It will be very similar to my other arcade stick where I showed you in another video. This one, however, is complete. You don't have to do any assembly. It already has buttons and joystick and a USB encoder inside. So all you really have to do is plug it into a PC or a Raspberry Pi and you're good to go. So the buttons are standard 30 millimeters, so you can swap them out with something better if that matters to you. The joystick can easily be replaced as well with a Sandwell version. Since all the mounting holes are already there, it will be a very simple swap. So I really like the acrylic case with the translucent bottom. It gives it a really unique look and it even has LED lights built in to bling it out if you're into that kind of thing. Since it's clear, adding artwork underneath the acrylic top shouldn't be too hard. Just use the top as a template to trace out and cut your artwork. On the bottom, it has suction cups that latch onto smooth, flat surfaces. I'm not a big fan of it, so I'll probably remove them and put something else instead. This arcade stick is pretty light, but there is room inside to put some weights in it if you want it to give it a little bit more heft. When you plug it up to a Raspberry Pi, it shows up as a standard gamepad and can be configured to work with Recall Box or Retro Pi. It works just as well on a PC with minimal configuration. So this device is a great way to get an arcade stick that can be used as is or upgraded with better arcade parts. It can be gutted out and used for many other projects including stuffing a Raspberry Pi inside for an all-in-one unit. It's also the perfect starting point for building arcade sticks for all sorts of consoles like the Nintendo Switch or PlayStation. So now I'm going to show you how I installed a Raspberry Pi inside this thing. So one of the first things I did was remove the suction cups because I think they look kind of ugly. And as you can see, they're removed. It's easily removed by just removing the hooks that hold them in place and then unscrewing the four bolts that hold the top cover. As you can see, this is where I put the Raspberry Pi. This is actually the Raspberry Pi 1. A Raspberry Pi 2 or 3 would fit, and of course, a Raspberry Pi 0 would be even smaller. Before installing the Raspberry Pi, set up RetroPi, recall box, and test it out to ensure everything is working. You can then plug in the USB cable from the arcade stick. So I also attached an HDMI cable and an OTG cable as well. As you can see from here, now you want these cables to be as thin as possible so that they could fit in that little groove uh, when you put the top cover on. And you also want to be able to bundle up the wires so that they don't get in the way. And for me, the best way to angle the Raspberry Pi board was to put it like this. This way the uh, wires and the board doesn't get in the way of the other buttons and components inside the enclosure. And you want to make sure that these wires will fit through that little um, basically groove so that um, you can close it properly with the HDMI cable. You can use a very short and thin HDMI cable and then use an extension cable if it's not long enough. And this is the OTG cable. So we're going to power that with a USB male A to A. And all that's left to do is really to um, make sure that the wires are nicely tidied up and they don't get in the way of anything else. So I'm going to push the um, HDMI cable and the OTG cable over here. And then what you can do now is just put on the top cover and then you can just basically screw on the four bolts. Now it's time to test everything out. So the first thing we're going to hook up is the HDMI cable. Now if it's not long enough, you can always buy an extension cable. And I think the best thing to do would be to use a very short and thin HDMI cable. And then this way, if you need it longer, you can just add an extension HDMI cable. So to power the Raspberry Pi, we're going to plug up a USB-A male-to-male cable and then plug it up to a 5-volt adapter. Next, I'll show you how to configure the controller settings, and you may need to attach a uh, USB keyboard to, in order for you to do this, but I've already done it, so that's why I can navigate with the joystick. But it will get detected as a gamepad, as you can see, and then what you want to do is just run through these, uh, up, down, left, right, and we're going to skip these, so hold down any button, uh, skip that one as well. So once we get to the A button, we hit A, B and then X is over there and then Y and start. I'm going to use that button and then select and page up and then page down and we're going to skip L2, R2, L3 and R3 because we don't have those buttons. And then for the hotkey, we're going to use the same button we use for select and you want to hit OK and then down in input P1, you want to select uh, this is number zero and then you want to go hit back 
and then you want to exit out of this menu. If you want to play with more players, you can always connect via Bluetooth using wireless controllers. If you're interested in picking one up, links will be in the description. Anyways, that's it for this review. I hope you found it informative. And if you did, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.